Hello, yes, it's Joe here for Joyrider TV, back with some more live questions and answers from the Wild Wind Boat Park. Um, it's the last Wednesday of our season here at Wild Wind, so this time next week um, we'll actually be closed. So um, the scene here on the beach, um, if the weather's good, will hopefully be quite different by then where we'll have quite a few of the boats already put away. Hi, Min, Mini. Um, sorry, I'm really bad at pronouncing names unless it's something I'm familiar with. Hi, Benjamin. Hi, James. Nice to have you on board. And hello, Hayden. Early for this one. Well in. Yeah, good job. How are you, Ewan? Hi, Kuro. 5150. In, it's either Italy or strange. Hi, Rodrigo. Hi. Oh, you pronounce it. Uh, uh, mine. Mine. Okay. Hi. Hi, Sean. Hi, Marco. Sorry, I've got uh, Yeah, hi, Marco. Nice to have you on board. Yeah, um, thanks for tuning in once again. Um, hi, steve -o. It's Wednesday again. Comes around so quickly. It certainly does. Hi, Kush. Nice to have Michigan beaming in to sunny Vasilik. We have got the return of the sunshine, finally. Hi, Donovan. Morning. Yeah, it's... It's almost time for a beer here. Um, I think you, I'm guessing that you're in the USA, uh, so you would be living in the past. Whereas here in Greece, we're in the future, but anybody who's in Australia or New Zealand, they'd be way in the future. Time travel is a thing, um, but only uh, because of time differences. Did you say last night that it's white slices last year? While we're in Canada for Donovan, nice. Okay, good to have Canada on board. Yeah, um, yeah, White Slice is moving on. He wants to focus on his um, windsurfing career. You can check out White Slice's windsurfing on Instagram. I believe his handle is White Slice Media on Instagram. So um, check out White Slice. He's one of the guys from the team. But he is, it happens to a lot of people in Vasiliki that um, you come out to do some work as a sailing instructor, but the windsurfing here is so good that it is possible that the windsurfing takes over. I think I've got some strange shadow. Good luck to him. Yes, Richard, hi. When can we book for next year? I, I dare say if you called the office, um, our booking office, you should be able to book now, I'd have thought. Um, no time like the present. Get your booking in. Oh, oh, we're having a, a moment of don't do that. Oh, tiller extension in the boat park, but um, a save. Yeah, just the last of the boats coming out of the water now. Um, it being a bit later in the season, the sun is going down a bit earlier. <laughs> Steve-O is already penciled in for next year. Yeah, so let's get penciling in. How's that for this? There's a, oh, it's the shadow of this mast. Aha, there's a mast. Okay, I'll just flip this round so you can see what I'm looking at. We're looking at that directly into the sun. Hi, Dawson. Nice to have you on board. Um, yeah, so it is the last Wednesday of the season here in Vasiliki at Wild Wind. Uh, but I'm pretty sure we are taking bookings for next year. So do get in there quick. Get it while it's hot. Hi, Johannes. Johannes, uh, good to have you with us on this very nice Wednesday. Yeah, so the weather has fully been on the fritz, on the blink. It's not been working now for the last nearly three weeks. We haven't had that champagne cross shore sailing wind for three weeks now since the arrival of the Medicane um, here in Greece. Bad Boy 94 mast video. Yeah, I've been... I've got all the footage ready to be assembled. All right, I'll tell you what, James, I will assemble, because we're really busy uh, this week. We've actually got over 50 people with us sailing this week, and uh, we've lost a lot of our staff. So we are particularly busy on the beach, which is why there's been a few days where there haven't, like yesterday, there wasn't anything uh, released on Joyrider TV, just because we've been pretty flat out 
with all this, but I will be assembling that mast video. And I think you might be slightly disappointed. It's not particularly exciting, but at least then I'll have done it. No, it's just like, yeah, 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 for sure. Um, yeah, yeah, so um, yeah, we still haven't had the cross shore wind return since the Medi came and the week before the Medi came when the arrival of this system kind of upset everything. It's a delicate system that we have here, but if the weather is, let's call it normal, then it's very reliable. But as soon as someone throws a load of cloud in the sky, then it's not working quite so well. And we do have some pretty swirly, gusty, confused wind conditions here, which we've had, uh, which is why the videos haven't been coming thick and fast. But if you saw, uh, we've had qu I've had quite a good breakthrough this week in that if you saw the video that I put up on Monday. Hi, Martin. Sailing in the rain? No, we've got sunshine again. But yes, I was sailing in the rain. Uh, yes, yeah, so that's the video I was talking about. Um, the sailing in the rain video, which was with Linda on Monday. If, you've, if you saw that, you might have noticed this superior audio quality. I have had a breakthrough with a new microphone. Thanks to everybody who's been supporting the channel on Patreon, who helped to pay for the new microphone, which has provided that better audio quality. Um, and this is a very small microphone that records the audio. Hey, Ronald, no way, I can't believe you're here. But you're not here, you're there. Um, Ronald is, is one of the guys who's out here a lot of the time. He's actually got his own boat in the Wild Wind Boat Park. And the boat is still there, it hasn't blown away. Wow, we're gonna see some live boat parking. This is very exciting. Live boat parking, can you believe this? Yes, yeah, so um, nice that you're in Tanzania, Ronald. Wow, what a, are we, Tanza cat already. Ronald's already there. Okay, there's just some, and Jason's with him. Okay, just some guys who want to say hello to Ronald. Who wants to say hello to Ronald? Hello, Ronald. All right, we've got Rick, we've got Linda, hello. got Angus, there's Mike. Everyone's saying hello to Ronald. That's nice, isn't it? Um, there's Lucy. Oh, I think Ollie wants to say hello to Ronald. Hey, Mum. Sorry I haven't called. <laughs> okay, that was a little section called Say hello to Ronald. Um, I think Ronald is tickled pink. Oh, Martin says greetings to Jason. Nice. Okay, I'm going to... I think... Are we into the scrolling back? or uh, Okay, fun day sailing it's been. Three weeks of poor wind up in Vancouver. Been driving in, diving in your old videos to pass the time. What a good idea. If you can't have champagne sailing conditions or any sailing conditions, then that is a very good time to go through the archives on Joyrider TV and check out some of the great stuff that has already happened. Um, you know, because there is great stuff from like three years ago, four years ago. It doesn't all have to be current. Um, oh, hi, Robin. Nice to have you on board. As ever. Hope you're going well with your 16. Hi, Luke. Are you going to do a video on the RS Aero? Get him on next season. Nice choice. Um, yeah, it's been... Uh, as you may or may not um, have guessed, but I do have a list called videos to make. Maybe you wouldn't have guessed that, that I've got that list. Um, but I have got a list called videos to make. And on that list of videos to make, I was going to do an RS Aero review. But like with a lot of the videos on that list, I haven't quite got round to it because other stuff comes up like, like life just gets in the way sometimes. Um, and uh, didn't make the aero video just yet, but there's still time. But let's say maybe I will. But let's also say maybe it's going to wait until next year. Who knows? But um, 
I'll do what I can. Okay, scrolling back. Scrolling back. I reckon we've got another 15 minutes of sunshine remaining. Yeah, but um, what I can say now about the RS Aero is it is a great boat. Very nice, but um, a lot more technical to get the top performance out of than the laser. Would you agree with that as a statement? Yeah. 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 A lot more technical than the laser to get um, the top performance out of. But it's really, really light. That is the unique selling point of the aero is it weighs almost nothing it's almost got a negative weight it's like they filled the hull with helium very lightweight easy to manage on the beach really great fast great performance carbon mast on there nice boat good choice uh for a monohull okay aha uh -huh. Johannes asks, what do you guys at Wild Wind do during winter? Oh. Okay, is this a question for Ricky Nielsen? Uh, yes. Okay, flipping it round, Rick's going to answer this one. So, Rick, what are you doing this winter? This winter, uh, given the pandemic, uh, my pub's shut, so I can't work at the pub. So, I'm going to join the Amazon delivery team. Uh, and also, Wild Wind Mauritius is in a bit of lockdown as well, so I can't go there. Uh, so, yeah, I'm going to be delivery driver. There you go. You heard it here first. Rick's going to be a delivery driver. I think, um, white, van white van man. Watch out for him on the roads of, uh, where would that be? The north, uh, northwest? Northwest, yeah. Northwest England. Look out for a white van with a uh, Hobie Cat. Could you put a Hobie Cat sticker on it? Joyrider TV. Yeah, Joyrider TV <laughs> sticker. Yeah, so um, that's what Rick's doing. I, I'm going to be staying in Vasiliki. I'll have some boats on the beach, hopefully. Um, so this winter, I'm actually intending to keep a 16, maybe the 14 on the beach. Uh, so I can get out when um, the conditions are looking favourable, which would be nice. But I do a lot of biking, as you may have seen on the channel. Um, there are a few biking videos there from the winter months. But um, every, as a lot of the guys from Wild Wind, they go to university. Uh, uh, which is which is nice okay scrolling back Kevin should I buy a Hobie 16 because I need to practice some more or do you think I should buy one and practice with that I think just if you're gonna if your end result in your sailing career is you're intending that you're finishing line of your sailing career is on a Hobie 16 then I'd say you might as well just start off with one or um get one now and then you can grow with the boat I think it's a really good idea because yes the Hobie 16 does come with challenges it stalls a little bit easier than some other catamarans um it's very powerful quite light but all you need to do is sail in less wind uh, to start with, with the Hobie 16 and gradually build up the amount of wind that you're going sailing in. And that way um, the 16 will grow with you. Just don't try to go out in too much wind too soon. Uh, just keep going in the light winds. When you're comfortable with that, go out in a bit more wind. I know that's gonna restrict how often you get out, but you can reef the mainsail on the 16 as well, which will extend your wind range a bit. Um, yeah, but just go straight in for the 16 and build up the amount of wind that you go sailing in. That would be my suggestion if the 16 is where you want to end up sailing. I think it's a great idea. Great boat. Very durable, the Hobie 16. Hi, Sean in oregon nice to have you with us hi jeffrey in hale michigan good morning it's it is quite bizarre that you guys are in the morning and i'm not hi matthew nice to have you on board as always okay ronald says how can jason win the tanzer cat 
That's an interesting question. I'd say the key to winning any event is, firstly, you've got to enter the event, have the right boat, do a lot of preparation before the event, uh, know as much about how to sail your boat as possible, um, do as much training as possible, possibly if you can do as much training as you can in the venue where the event is taking place so you get used to the conditions in that specific place that's a very good idea um, learn about the venue and the subtleties of perhaps what the wind does uh, normally perhaps if there's any tide stuff like that wind shadows um, local hazards things like that in the area but learn as much as you can about the boat that you're sailing learn as much as you can about the venue and um, then you're ready to go out and race and then how to win the event get the best start go the right way around the course don't make any mistakes and then if you do that every day perhaps you will be looking pretty good Okay, that's a great question, Ronald. I don't know if that's the answer you were looking for, but that's the answer you're getting. Yasure Pano. Um, nice t-shirt, man. Thanks. This is the Bad Boy 94 limited edition t-shirt. It's not actually available in the online store, but if you want one, um, I could knock one up for you. Here's what it looks like on the back. Are we getting that? Yeah, you could get an extremely limited edition Bad Boy 94 t-shirt. Um, but if you want one, you'll have to send me an email and uh, go about it that way because these are not available in the shops. But uh, there you go. All right, scrolling back. Arthur. Hello, Arthur. At what age did you start sailing? I think I was about 10 or 11 when I started sailing. Started off sailing on the east coast of England. Um, the first boat I was sailing on was a Wayfarer, which is a 16 foot long open dinghy for two or three people. Quite a heavy boat, um, but a monohull. Uh, I was also sailing at that time a mirror dinghy, which is a smaller, very traditional wooden boat. Uh, with a gaff rigged sail that's one of these sails that laces around the mast with an extra bit of mast poking up there um, that was more for me with one of the other guys who was learning um, of the same age um, also I was sailing an albacore which is a very traditional English class um, another 16 foot boat ridiculously powerful for two young sailors to go out on but um that as well and then within a very short time of starting sailing i started crewing um at my local sailing club on dart 18s um and did quite a lot of crewing um up until when i got my own dart 18 uh which that was the big turning point which uh changed my whole life was getting hold of that dart 18 because then I went on to sail that boat every single day. Because imagine being like 14 years old, having a Dart 18 and a good bit of water to go sailing on. That is where the addiction starts. So there we go. That's how I got. That's how I started off on the journey to get to where I am now. And where I am now is a very good place. Robbie just bought our first Hobie 16. Yes, congratulations and congratulations to everybody, um, regardless of your situation. But well done for buying the 16. Thoughts on the Lance cleats for the Jib Traveller? Traveller line seems to keep slipping. Um, I'm not familiar with what a Lance cleat actually is. Um, on our 16s, yeah, I'm not, not familiar with this terminology, I'm afraid. All right, I'm just, I have a Hobie 16 just here. Um, we're using these um, cam cleats, 
these are what come as standard in Europe these days. Um, so we're using these cam cleats on the jib travelers and we never have any problems with these. The only thing that might happen with these is one of the springs go, but these springs you can order from these cleats are Harkins. Uh, you can order them from Harkin. They're not very expensive to replace. Um, and there we go. That's what we're using. Uh, so that is the sort of cleat that I would recommend. But um, I'm not sure what you mean by a lance cleat, whether it's this kind of thing or similar. All right. Scrolling back. Um, but yes, available at Joyrider TV, uh, joyrider.com, totaljoyrider.com. You can get a Joyrider giving it the beans bottle so you don't have to use a plastic bottle looking after the planet one bottle at a time. Uh, you can order one at the online store. Important to stay hydrated uh, these days. All right, just scrolling back. All right. Scrolling back. Okay. Arno. Good morning from Canada. Hello again, Canada. I have the old style upper rudder castings with no adjustment on the top. Is this worth upgrading? I would say if when you go to lock your rudders down, if they lock down so that there isn't any play, so that when it locks down the rudder blade let's have a look hold on it's easier to have a look i think so here we go um can we can we see hold on sorry about shaky cam here but um so when you put the rudder down if the rudder blade goes all the way to the front of the stock and doesn't move then that's all that you're looking to happen. All that we're trying to do is lock this all the way into the rudder stock. And so when there's pressure on the blade, it doesn't pull back at all away from that part of the rudder stock. If you've already got that happening, where the rudder is locking down nicely, then I'd say there's no need to upgrade, but if the rudder isn't locking down nicely like that and um, what that's going to do is make your steering very heavy. So um, in that case, yes, worth the upgrade. But I think that upgrade is going to come with a reasonable amount of expense to it. I dare say you'd be looking at, what, a couple of hundred dollars to upgrade that. So, uh, yes, but you do want your rudders locking all the way down. Otherwise, your steering is going to be heavy. Right, scrolling back. Okay, we've got Noah. How difficult is sailing a wasp versus a laser? I would say significantly more difficult. Um, I haven't sailed a wasp, but I do know what it is. Um, if you may be familiar with the boat called the International Moth, which is one of the first boats that really started foiling. Um, it's very, very narrow hull and wings like this, and then foils, looks ridiculous on the water, very light. Um, the wasp, with a Z, is um, kind of, it's based on the International Moth, but made a lot more durable and uh, a lot cheaper than a moth um, and um, but it's foiling and the hull is like this wide which means yes it's going to be significantly more difficult to sail than a laser but if you can already sail a laser and you want to get into foiling then I think the wasp is a great choice because it, it's got some uh, what would you call them, um, innovations that have been part of the design that makes it a bit more user-friendly for the foiling. And But if you're talking, um, because we've got foiling kits for our lasers, so we can actually foil our lasers. So if you're talking 
is the wasp more difficult to foil sail than a laser it's probably going to be easier because the whole boat has been designed to foil whereas the uh, system that we have for our lasers it's, it's not a perfect system because the laser was never meant to fly um, so there we go scrolling back so if you're new to these um, Q&A sessions um, I'm answering all the questions in the order of which they came in so don't worry I will get to your question um, but uh, to, to make sure that every but nobody has to wait too long. I'm going through all the questions in order. Um, there we go. Kevin, another question. Uh, what price is about right for a second-hand Hobie 16? I know I know, have around 2,000 to spend, but don't know what price I should look for. I think um, for 2,000, whatever units of currency that is, I think you should, for 2,000, you should be looking at a fairly um, a good seaworthy Hobie 16 for that amount of money. Um, couldn't really put a year that you'd be looking for for 2,000, but I would think, could you get a 1990 boat for 2,000, let's say dollars? Uh, maybe at a stretch uh, because with the Hobie 16 they do hold their value very well especially if they've been looked after but um, as I've said before if you are buying a used boat um, if it hasn't had the rigging replaced recently you will want to replace the standing rigging when we're talking about the standing rigging we mean the shrouds and the forestay the pieces of wire that hold the mast up. And while you're at it, you might as well tr replace the trapeze wires as well. Especially if you're gonna be sailing single-handed, you don't want a trapeze wire breaking and you're in the water, boat sails off. That could be a bad time. But um, for $2,000, you should be looking at a fairly decent boat. Um, but it just depends on the boat. There's boats from the 70s, which are in absolutely amazing condition. And there's boats from, like, probably boats from 2010, which are absolutely destroyed. Uh, so, there you go. It's a tricky question to answer. But, um, like I've said before, if you are looking to buy a boat and you find an advert for a boat on the internet, email me with a link to that advert. I'll have a look at it and let you know what I think. All part of the service. Uh, don't forget to tip the waiter. All right. Um... There we go. Good question, though, Kevin. Russell, dialed N-07. What sailing events are you looking forward to watching? The NAC 17 Europeans, Worrell 1000, America's Cup, Sail GP, etc. I like watching the Sail GP stuff um, because one of the guys who used to work here is, um, I don't know if he's the skipper or the team manager, seems to change the position every year. His name's Chris Draper. He he was helming one of the AC-72s, uh, the Luna Rossa boat. And we used to share a room here in Vasiliki. There's a lot of instructors who've worked at Wildwind who've gone on to really amazing things. But I think Chris has done in sailing better than anyone else. He got a, a silver medal in the Olympic Games uh, in the 49er class and then went on to steer an AC-72. Can you believe that? Um, yeah, so I like the Sail GP. That is a really good one. But what else am I looking forward to seeing? Depends what is actually possible to watch. Um, I would be interested to watch the Worrell 1000. I've never really tuned in for anything like that, but it would be very interesting for me to watch uh, or for anyone to watch, I should think. Yeah, interesting question, but I haven't really considered it, to be honest. But the Sail GP is very good. It's fast, exciting, um, and like the um, the Extreme 40 uh, stuff as well. That is a very, very similar format, in my opinion, to the Sail GP. Okay, this is currently an offshore gust. F50 boats, yeah. Um, all right, scrolling back. 
Kuro 5150. Um, know that it's difficult with the wild wind season, but wouldn't it be cool to bring bad boy 94 to do the round Texel race? Just putting the idea out there. Oh my goodness, that is an amazing idea. However, yeah, it's a great idea, but I think I to actually take bad boy 94 and uh, all the way to Holland, to get to Holland from here would take something like by road, which obviously you'd have to do taking a boat. It would be 24 hours, all right, let's say 18 hours on the ferry, probably the same again driving. Uh, yeah, it's about a thousand kilometers from uh, the ferry port in Italy to get to uh, the ferry port for the Texel, uh, Tessel, um, to get to that island. Yeah, so it takes a good day and a half to get there. And then of course a day and a half to get back. I did do the round Texel race in, I think it was 2004, um, where it, we were traveling for, I think something like 36 hours each way. And we were sailing for three hours and that was it. It's, uh, so from here, it is a difficult one to get to, to justify that amount of traveling. But I would absolutely love to get Bad Boy 94 out there. But more realistic would be, I'd fly to Holland, borrow a boat off someone and do it that way round. Perhaps there's somebody who's looking to do the round Texel race and they'd like me to come and steer their boat for them. Then that would be a much more sensible arrangement for me than driving there, which would take a very long time. Good question though. Valentin, nice to have you on board. Are you gonna do some virtual sailing races anytime soon? What a good idea. Um, yeah, if you didn't see the virtual regatta series that we had going during lockdown, um, that uh, it was really, really good. I would suggest if you have far too much time on your hands, check out virtual regatta and uh, check out the videos on here that I did from before. Uh, and it's free, uh, you play it online, you need reasonably decent, um, reasonably good internet connection, but it's really, really fun and it's very realistic and you can race against people all over the world and it's really fun. And I think once everything has settled down here, perhaps, Perhaps I'm going to leave it for a bit before I start doing any of that, but um, may, we'll see how the world pans out. But yes, I'm keen to start doing some more racing on that and setting up my own series. I think it's really fun. Christian was there. Oh, yeah. Hi, Peter. Nice to have you on board. Fun day sailing. How often do you take out? Uh, one of the mono morans um, which is your favorite single hull boats um i don't go mono hull sailing very much at all really um but i would say my favorite mono hull that we have here in the wild wind boat park is the foiling laser uh it's really really good fun uh it's because i haven't done very much foiling so it's a real novelty item for me uh, to go flying and the laser is a really good stable platform for it. I prefer the foiling laser to the foiling aero. Um, it's just a bit more of a bit, bit more stable, bit easier to control uh, with the laser because the aero will foil in less wind than the laser because it's so much lighter. But the wind strength you need for that is a wind strength we don't really get here in Vastaliki. It's like that what would it be like 12 knots so you, on a normal day the wind here would go up to about eight knots maybe 10 in the morning and then when the afternoon wind comes in it'll be straight into about 16 and then building from there so we don't really get that 12 knots of wind um good question peter hi um thanks for all you do for sailing thanks thanks for thanking me for that i sail a prindle 16 in Chesapeake Bay, Reedville, Virginia, USA. Nice one, Peter. Yeah, um, I would absolutely love to get a Prindle 16 or a 15 or an 18 um, here to try one. 
and um, a bit late this year now, but to go and give it the beans on a Prindle um, in Vasiliki Bay to see how fast it could go uh, be really fun. Uh, and interesting to find out how it compares to the Hobie. All right, Johanna's got to go see you soon. Sorry, I missed that. Um, I dare say you're gone by now. All right, we've got Taipish Timon. Nice to have you on board. Um, which is your favorite catamaran, whether one-handed or two-handed? Um, my favorite catamaran, let's talk double-handed because um, that's what I do most of. Favorite catamaran in less than 25 knots of wind is the Tornado. Um, in more than 25 knots of wind is the Hobie 16. Um, the reason I'm not sailing the Tornado so much in wind above that uh, strength is because I just get a little bit nervous about breaking it um, because the Tornado isn't as robust as the Hobie 16. The Hobie 16 is a very, very, very strong boat. These things will last forever. Um, but a Tornado, less strong. One of the weak points on the Tornado is the rudder system. Um, doesn't fill me with quite as much, uh, what's the word? Um, I don't trust it as much um, as on the 16, which the, the, everything about the Hobie 16 is strong, uh, which is why I sail that most when it's really windy. But the Tornado, uh, you can get that amazing performance out of in as lit, you don't need so much wind. Uh, like that wind strength I said, we never get here, 12 knots of wind, and you could be double trapezing and uh, flying the hull, having a lovely time, whooping and cheering. But the Tornado is just great because it's wide, it's long, very fast, and so smooth, really nicely built, and it's just a, a great, great boat. Uh, and if you're thinking Tornado sounds pretty good, actually, um, you can pick up a Tornado for not too much money considering what it is you get. Um, you could get a ready to race Tornado with a carbon mast. Maybe you need to replace the sails, who knows, for as little as, if you're lucky, 6,000 euros, 7,000 euros. And what a great boat it is. There's a really good racing fleet. I, I really like the Tornado. Um, okay, scrolling back. Uh, scrolling back. Uh, okay. Oh, single-handed. Oh, yeah. Um, I don't. The only single-handed catamarans that we have here are the Hobie um, FX1, which is very nice indeed. Um, I wouldn't say that I love it though. I like it. It's really nice, but I wouldn't say that I love it. The Hobie 14 single-handed boat. Now that is a lot of fun. The, the Hobie 14 in more than 20 knots of wind is a really fun day out. So that would be my choice there. Thanks for the question. Valentine, going to sail a variant of Ronde Tessel next weekend and had Dutch championships two weeks ago and came 10th. Well done. Congratulations on that good result. Um, and good luck in your sailing of the variant of the Round Tessel. I dare say that must be because of the COVID that um, I'm assuming that I don't think the, the actual Rond Rondon Tessel race went ahead this year. So uh, it must be a scaled down version because of the regulation. So good luck with that. But um, for those of you who don't know, the Round Texel, as we'd call it with the, uh, the British tongue, would be um, Texel is one is one of the islands for, off the north of Holland. And every year there's a race around this island, which is the biggest catamaran race in the world. Um, when I did it, I think there were 700 boats on the start line. They start the race between uh, two massive ships and the starting sequence is actually carried out using a helicopter with smoke signals instead of having flags. It is... Um, 
it's a great race, really very good. Everybody should do the round Texel race. If you're in Europe anyway, I think it's a great idea. All right, scrolling back. Okay, Steph, do you prefer the tornado? I think, as luck would have it, um, I think I just uh, went into some good tornado stuff just now. So yes, I do prefer the tornado. It's, um, she's such, such a lovely boat. Um, okay, we've got Aiden. Where do you sail out of? I say uh, this is, let's flip this bad boy around. Here we go. Sun's gone down, by the way. There you go, behind the mountain. Um, this is Vasiliki Bay on the Greek island of Lefkus. And um, um, the Greek island of Lefkus and the place where all these boats are based is can we see that wild wind um so um if you want to know more about the place here just check out the wild wind website wildwind.co.uk uh to have a look there and then you can get a lot of the information about what goes on here but i think you probably get the idea from watching these videos down here so this is vasiliki bay um that island there that's kefalonia that island there that's ithaca Ithaca's the one which is famous for a lot of the Greek mythology. Kefalonia is the one that's famous if um, you caught the book or the movie Captain Corelli's Mandolin. Nicolas Cage. Put the bunny back in the box. Maybe I said that before. Okay. Scro scrolling back, which I just noticed uh, apparently it sounds like drums. Uh, okay. Um, scrolling back. Okay, VFR03. Just been watching Late Guard of Tornado Your Appearance again. Is this still one of your favourite videos? I would say no. It's not one of my favourite videos. It is my favourite video that I've ever put on the channel. Um, this was, I believe, race six from the... Just guessing now it must have been 2017 perhaps tornado european championships at lake garda italy and um it was the best race we had the whole event and uh just really really good fun and great conditions great race frills and spills i really like that video i've probably done other videos that i like um almost as much but i really like that one um i don't actually watch any of my videos back um once they've gone up on youtube but that one i've watched several times even though it's quite long um well worth a look i'd say all right scrolling back uh, i'll try to be a bit quieter with my finger on the scroll back okay Rodrigo, what is your opinion about take up the opposite rudder when you sail upwind? Yeah, I. Um, there are classes where that is a very popular technique, such as the Hobie 16 class. Um, lifting the wind rudder upwind is very popular in the racing of the Hobie 16. And um, because the guys at the front of the fleet are doing it, You'd have to, you'd be foolish to suggest that it doesn't work. It obviously works because that's why they do it. But for me, I think if I was on the race course, I wouldn't lift my windward rudder unless I was sailing a long distance race and I was going to be on one tack for a long time because I can't help but think um, it's going to add to the amount of time it takes you to tack the boat to put one rudder down, lift the other rudder. It's also fraught with danger with the Hobie rudder cam system where you might have an inverted cam and then that's it, your race is over if you've got an inverted cam. Um, yeah, so I'm all for leaving the rudders down and just getting on with sailing the boat. I believe the reason that 
that's popular with the Hobie 16s, it's because the boats flex. So one hull goes up more than the other, these are hulls, which means it's very difficult to get the rudders truly um, in the perfect alignment because as the hulls flex, the rudders are gonna do something wonky as well. So by lifting one rudder, it means that's no longer a problem. Oh, we've got to 45 minutes already. This is flying by, so no more, okay, no more questions um, if you could avoid that. Oh yeah, I just saw Re Rodrigo. Yeah, um, yeah, that's, that's what I thought. But um, on a long distance race, um, if I was gonna, if we're gonna be sailing like, let's say 10 miles on one tack, then I'd be all for um, lifting a rudder. If I was sailing a tornado, maybe lifting the dagger board, the centre board as well, and um, just getting rid of that extra resistance, that drag that you don't need. Oh, uh, so, oh, Steph asked again, do you prefer the tornado? I prefer the tornado, yes, yes. Um, but let's not rule out, of course, the good old design C2. I absolutely love that bad boy, as you will have seen in any videos where I've been sailing the good old design C2, which is an F18. Um, on the downwind leg, uh, with the spinnaker up on the C2, when that spinnaker's pulling in a decent amount of wind, that thing absolutely hammers. Zero resistance, feather light handling. It is absolutely magnificent in every way. It is such a well-designed boat. Absolutely love it to bits, but the tornado's bigger. It's wider, longer, sails are bigger, and thus it is faster and it's the size on the tornado that I absolutely love. And sailing the tornado upwind with the carbon mast and the nine batten sail, it just does everything that you want. Thanks again to Thanos at OS3 Sails for providing the firepower for Bad Boy 94. Fantastic sails. Um, all right, scrolling back. Here we go, um, scrolling back, scrolling back, um, I'm, all right, Christian G13, hello Joe, hello Christian, nice to have you on board as always, um, Kuro5150 who asked the question about am I going to take Bad Boy 94 for Texel, my crew is not looking very confident for next year's race, okay, um, yeah, maybe I'll come and sail with you in the round Texel race. Um, I, have to, I have to check my diary there. Steve Rogers uh, in Canada, I believe, says plus one for virtual regatta. Yep, yeah, let's get that. Sorry, I thought it was raining, but there's not a cloud in the sky. Valentin, we should stay in contact. Maybe you can use my boat to steer. Yes. Um, Okay, I'd just like to know what sort of boat you're sailing, I'm sure. Oh, have we got a... Wow, I'm getting some offers here. Oh, here we go. I own a Dart Hawk tuned with infusion sails. Not going to use it for round texel. Okay. The Dart Hawk is one of the earliest F-18 uh, boats. But um, racing F-18 these days you're up against it sailing one of the old designs against the newer designs. In my opinion, at the moment, the four um, event dominating F-18s would be, we've got, of course, the good old design C2. Uh, we've got the brand new, just released NACRA Evolution. What else have we got? We have got the Windrush Edge and we've got the Scorpion Exploder. And I would say we've probably got whichever NACRA was before the Evolution up there in the podium ready boats. So the Dart Hawk is gonna be a difficult boat to get the good result with. I appreciate the offer. Um, 
there we are. Noah asks, why are foiling kits for laser so expensive? Well, um, they are expensive. The foiling kits we use come from glide free foils, which are coming from Australia. Um, I would say you could direct that question at glide free foils um, and see what they come up with as an answer. Why are the foiling kits so expensive? But I would say it's probably because they're not mass produced. They're only making a few of these foiling kits probably to order. Um, so when things aren't made on such a big scale, like there's not thousands of them being made, it means that they are more expensive to produce, which is why that cost gets passed on to the end buyer. Okay, scrolling back. No more questions now, please. Been going 50 minutes, which is almost long enough. Okay. Okay, Albert retracted his message, um, but thanks for tuning in, Albert. Kevin, what is the difference between a Hobie 14 and a Hobie 16? It's the size. Um, Hobie 14, great single-handed boat, or if you're sailing with two very light people, um, but really 14 is better if you're only going to be sailing single-handed. They do a very, very, they've got a very similar design, but the 14 is very small. Should we go and have a look at a 14, shall we? Uh, let's go for a little walk. Okay, uh, we're gonna have a look at a 14. So the Hobie 14, very good for single-handed sailing. It's so exciting, it's small, it's um, nimble, but also the 14, because it's so small, is difficult to sail. Here is a Hobie 14. This is an absolute loaded weapon sat there, just ready for the big send. Because it's so small also, it makes it feel very, very lively, very responsive. Oh, it's an absolute beast. You've got to love a Hobie 14 on a windy day. So much fun. But in my opinion, I'd say just for single-handed sailing, whereas the 16, as we've looked at earlier on in the season, is good for single-handed sailing, but it's really a double-handed boat we can see the size difference there. The 16 is much bigger, much more suitable for two people to sail. And there we go. There are the differences. I think that was a good answer. Okay, just coming back to my station here. Okay, so spinning this bad boy around. Um, okay. Okay, let's ease back on any more questions now, unless the question is a uh, continuation of a previous question. Um, Arquimedes, nice to have you on board. Peter, nice to see you, yes, and you. Uh, the Hobie 16 neoprene rail kit helps while out on the trapeze, but would welcome your recommendations for footwear, providing good footing on the hull itself. What shoes to wear? Good question. Um, yeah, I've been, I think the word is championing uh, the Zero Shoes Colorados this year, um, which are a barefoot shoe, but they're not specifically a sailing shoe. Very good though, if you want a versatile shoe that's going to take you in the water and uh, for walking around in, riding, biking, for everything. But um, the sailing shoes that I'm wearing these days are Gull, that's G-U-L, Gull Code Zero, um, Code Zero uh, sailing shoes. Uh, they're like neoprene shoes. The grip is really, really good. Uh, they've got a lot of space for the toes. Now you may think, does that matter? But a lot of sailing shoes really squash your toes, which if you're sailing for a while, like here when we're uh, sailing in the afternoon, you might be sailing for three or four hours. 
in the afternoon. You don't want your toes being squashed. So these Gold Code Zero shoes, very good. Um, if you check out in any of my videos, there's a link to my Amazon storefront. You'll find in there a link to these Gold Code Zero shoes and then you can buy some. Uh, they're only like, you know, you're only looking at $30 for a pair of shoes like that and it makes such a difference to your sailing experience. Also, these Gull shoes have got um, good protection over the top, which is really good if you're sticking your foot under the rudder stock like I do, because um, you want something with a bit of protection there, not just plain neoprene, which could lead to a bit of a hurty foot. No one wants a hurty foot. All right. Archimedes, sorry, I mean, do you ever get any? Oh, I think you must have withdraw. You withdrew the previous question. I mean, do you get any Hobie 16 corner broken? Um, no, if you're talking about the corner casting, uh, this, can we see this? This piece here, um, it is very rare that these break, um, in, my opinion, in my experience course you might have broke one so well I've broken one but uh, we've never broken these uh, you'd break it if when you're assembling your boat with a big hammer if you're using a metal hammer then this will probably shatter and be destroyed but if you're using a rubber hammer or sometimes we use a big lump of wood then you should be all right all right typish Tim on have another question is it worth buying a self tacking jib for an FX one um, I think if you are going to be putting a jib on an FX1, either to give it a bit more juice for single-handed sailing in lighter winds, or if you're gonna be sailing the boat as a FX1 too, the double-handed version, then yeah, why not have the self-tacking jib? But the other option could be, if you wanna do it on the cheap, uh, spend less money, is, because, if you're sailing with two people, you can still sail effectively, especially if you're not racing without a self-tacking jib. It's the downwind where you might um, find you've run out of hands a little bit. So check out my video on the low, low budget self-tacking jib, which is a homemade self-tacking jib, which all you're doing is you're putting a piece of string on the boat, but do check out that video. It's a really good one. Dakula Platypus, hi there. Nice to have you on board. Hobie Cat, I think that's Ollie in Germany. Scrolling back is like playing the drums for your listeners. Glad to keep you entertained. Well, and that way you know something's happening that I haven't just uh, fallen asleep. Corey, hello. Corey's in Vermont. Learn to rig and sail a Hobie 16 using your awesome YouTube channel. Thank you so much. Thank you for letting me know. It's always nice to know that the videos have been hitting the spot. So if um, the videos have been hitting the spot, a good way of letting me know that they've been hitting the spot is just by hitting the like button. But also you can um, just let me know. It's nice to know because if I know that it's worthwhile what I'm doing, uh, then I'm going to keep doing it. Hi, Stephen. In Paros, um, I hope that, um, yeah, so earlier on, Stephen, who's in Paros, which is another Greek island, um, I think he broke his back beam or it was broken or damaged, I think, in transit. And I actually uh, supplied Stephen with a, I think it's a 1983, that's a good vintage, uh, Hobie 16 rear beam. There's the story there, if you were wondering. Maybe you'll stop over in the spring. That's a great idea. Karis on oh, 144 hertz. Um, so my port bow tang is very broken. Okay, but it's not the actual tang. It's the hull around that's really messed up. Any help on how to fix it? Okay, what I'm, let's have a look at what I think. I'm guessing this is on a 16 or a, uh, let's guess that it's on a 16. So what, what I think is uh, going on here is 
the tang is messed up all this is probably cracked and a mess um, but one popular fix here if it's a real mess is to actually fill in this whole cavity in the front of the boat making it very very strong but um i this is a, of course a structural part of the boat so if it is a mess this is something that would be worth getting a someone who's good with fiberglass to get in there and stick some fiberglass in there um my experience doesn't extend to the fiberglass repairs we've got a very good guy who does that sort of stuff here um but yeah definitely get that addressed because having your bow tang pull out it's going to be uh, a rough experience okay scrolling back all right no more questions now please i have reached the hour um limit rodrigo um oh that was about the one rudder i believe yes same opinion hello stefan nice to have you on board Hello, Giles. Nice to have you on board. Have you ever sailed a Hobie 21? No, I haven't. I sailed a, I, I think it's a Hobie, um, the 21 Sport Cruiser California Cat, um, which, is tw which is like a Hobie 21, but it's got a big old cabin that sits on the front beam. Very, very heavy, smaller sails. But I never sailed a Hobie 21. I'd love to try one. But um, I wouldn't like to be pulling one out of the water because I think they're about 250 kilograms. That is going to help you put your back out. Yurun, uh, greetings from Corfu. Incidentally, Corfu is just up there. Um, it's a little way up there, but it's the next island to the north um, of where we are in Greece here, in case you're wondering. So greetings. Cormac, have... A C2, but it's undergoing work after splitting a hull. Unlucky. Oh, nasty. Was that from hitting the bottom with the dagger board? Those dagger boards are pretty durable, so could be. Do you prefer the Hobie Tiger or the Hobie 16? Good question. Depends on the wind strength. Um, and what is going on? Um, I've, the C2 has taken over from the Tiger um in my heart i'm sorry to say that but um the um yeah the 16 as i said in above 25 knots of wind is absolutely dominating but i quite partial to a bit of hobie tiger in that sort of wind as well but the 16 depends who i'm sailing with what the situation is i really enjoyed all of my years that i spent racing the hobie tiger so good because back when the Hobie Tiger was a um, a class, there was the F-18 class plus Hobie Tiger as a class. We were getting 100 boats at the World Championships. Those were some great days and I absolutely loved it. I've never raced the Hobie 16 on that sort of scale. So, um, yeah, uh, not a particularly good answer, but... Yeah, these days the 16 is winning. But the 16, the C2, the Tornado, the Tiger, all very good. And I think that is, yeah, I've already um, spoken quite a lot about liking the Tornado. So there we go. Okay. Okay. Biggest boat at Wild Wind is the Tornado. Uh, at six metres long and three metres wide, that is a big fella. That's the biggest boat that we've got. Okay, I'm doing quick answers now. Archimedes says, yes, the corner casting that holds the whole structure together. Yes. Hello, Tom. Nice to have you with us. Christopher, do you think that the older Hobie 16 would do better in waves? compared to the new ones, assuming excellent condition of the whole stanchion union. No, I don't see why. I think um, the uh, construction of the modern Hobie 16s is excellent. 
and there's no reason why I wouldn't say a new Hobie 16 would be absolutely killing it in the waves. Um, so, yeah, I don't think it would be any difference there due to the age. All right. Archimedes is in Brazil. Nice to have you on board. Uh, nice to be beaming to so many different places around the world. It's really quite amazing. Five years ago, who'd have thought we'd be doing this right now? Pim and Mo, big fan, big fan of you guys too. Thanks for tuning in and thanks for your support of Joyrider TV. You are supporting the channel just by watching the videos and hitting the like button. Um, so thanks very much for making it all worthwhile. Um, Christopher, thank you for doing another Q&A. So much juicy info. Yeah, you're not wrong. Okay, I'm looking forward to a beer now though. Albert, thanks for the videos. Joe, learn a lot to sail the 16. The latest beginner lessons are especially great. Ah, oh, excellent. That's good to know. Um, if, um, yeah, with those beginner videos, I, I've obviously done two, but I didn't know what kind of direction to take it in next. If you've got any suggestions, I might not get around to it by the time that we close, but I will certainly be looking to continue this series. So if you've got any ideas of direction, then, um, do let me know because I, you know, maybe I will do what you suggest or who knows. But if you let me know what you think, then at least I'll know what you think and then I can uh, apply that. So thanks. Um, Pim and Mo, what type of sailor should you be to enjoy the Hobie 16 as much as possible? Just the kind of sailor who loves uh, going fast, that you don't take life too seriously, um, that you like going fast and you don't take life too seriously and you uh, like going fast. I think that is all. All right, I'm just going super quick answers now because I'm almost 10 minutes over time. All right, see you, Kuro5150. T-Bolt Anton's on that. There is 30 knots of wind in my town. and going to sail for Laser Vago. Wow, <laughs> nice. Do uh, you think I could break the speed? Yeah, I think ooh, 20 miles per hour. What's that in knots? About uh, 16 knots. Yeah, I think you could smash it. Yeah, you've got to try. Which cats does Hobie still build? Uh, Hobie still build the 16, the 14, the Wildcat, the Pearl, and all of the plastic ones. Uh, there we go. We're into quick answers now. Um, should I fill it with epoxy? Sorry for the late question. Yeah, I think so. Um, I'll have to check because the 16 isn't built with epoxy. It's built with polyester resin. I'm pretty sure I'll have to check, but yes. Have you ever sold a moth? No, you must be crazy. Yes. Uh, oh, to sailor 16. Robin, thanks for another great Q and A and thanks to everyone for tuning in. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, thanks very much. These things are quite intense. Um, lots of talking, um, but thanks very much. Sean, thanks, Joe. Nice stream. Thank you. Um, we're on the Cosmote Greece 4G, providing the juice to beam this straight down the line into your television or computer or telephone. Thanks, Ollie. Nice one. All right, so it must be time for a beer. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for your continued support. Um, don't forget the Bad Boy 94 Limited Edition T-shirt. If you want one, it's going to be expensive, but it's worth it. Okay, thanks, James. Thanks, Marco. Prost. Yeah, I think that's German for cheers. Um, if you want a giving it the beans bottle, let's sell some stuff. Yeah, yeah, get over to totaljoyrider.com and buy some stuff because... Um, Winter is coming, Jon Snow, and uh, we need to get some money in the back. Captain Rogers out. Nice one, Steve. Always a pleasure. And um, we'll be seeing you next Wednesday with some more from a very different looking Wild Wind Sailing Holidays. And uh, sorry, I haven't mentioned the speed stick, the September speed stick for a while. That's because 
there hasn't been much going on. Cheers, Peter. Nice one. And I'll catch you next week. So, uh, yeah, this is uh, this is Bad Boy 94 Joyrider TV. Uh, 